Abusia, interesting story bi ambesi edi hon komo sisi yei. Bob Risky wo eye Nigeria. Na, according to eye Nigeria fon penyu fo che se udi nse moni bi. Ene ja, ya che no si edi nye kwa kotum kwa tu suwa nkwa dem. Wa nkwa dem oko da eye apartment. And a very dark black man edi sa eni usi ibe tuwa bwante. Na odi ni usi ibe tuwa bwante no. Ana Bob Risky eye fast. Zizi mebo ni yina mweti sisi ba ame che yom kitu webi ne di achire wo. Ne Bob Risky ye fast. Adi kwenye na msu mani ibe tuwa bwante ni seye. No wani abranti bo transaction. Tamu anu wada eye apartment wano. Na oda su eye donation. Ubi wano ya china tu mwada e krizi no. Oda su eye donation. Enu ne ku rezi rezi konsena. Si se ya ye kasi ya kupi yungo parliament. Na parliament yin komo o mudi no mubi sase a. Na Bob Risky nube de mwono. Mwje ne se oye oba na ase bema. Eno omu se omu jene suwa ebe ema. Ne mwom, omu jene kwa tu mwono. Na omu heni features ni hawa ni yon mati na wastati nufu oho. Ne tu mwono wastati ya bobo oho hips. En kwa fwonsu omu da prizi honsu ye mbe ema. An hea nubi di akwa shene to. Se de ye te because kono wabwante ya ne bo wading. Ne mwom wako pye mwo e ye prizi nsa anu. Ubi ya beti marwe nisa ha because zi ye kasi wano no. Wa ye oba be ema nwa nami ni baby. En tu omu e yi ni free hot ne kwa different e ye prizi. Eno omo eko mo ni ta na ni si, I mean, se mo che chwa mo ni se me. Eno na bari very dark black man e chile se no enti sa. Ge na wankwa wankwa dem, anaw boy no, wankwa wankwa dem e wo prison. Ne mo mo no wa apartment. Kwa shi yobu zani se, sa, ye, oba be mo an se ni se mi ya abe tutu mo Afrika, wali ni se mbe bow. Because si ye ya ye kase yinu, okwa ye wa public hearing no omo kan wase mo e wo parliament no. Omo bu zase, mo jene suwa yoba na se mo jene suwa ye be ma. Omo suwa mo jene suwa ye be ma. Na mo jene suwa ye be ma, mo jene kwa to hin. Omu suwa mbini niko fira meme ni mna Di wia nani nufu nene tuwa bo 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 no Omu hii mwenye adi ebe bo Nye wosua msa a transfer ni fri Wana very dark black man chene se Wama an transfer ni fri wobi ya huti Ni imu mwa mwa di niko apartment Apartment yuko no Ena nwa oye transactions E danye osha wano na siye achi na tuma Na siye jeli no Ubu wa de prison Na oye uusi danye E wo Lagos baby Iti nipa woye ne jumano nani si kase mwenye nye Inti wako bo bo be siyani adi adi ufri nko fubi Wobi wano de mwenye wu Eno mwa 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 Omo den omo nsa etu eye ni si kasem so money laundry ni si kasem so eno so ye twem e de free ho eno so free ho a bo brisk ni da mu ono no ya chi na tumu no ye donations enti eno na akwa kopi mo parliament omo this case na be so ku tie nsem ni bi wo be sira di so onyo so omo hu wo ye oba wo ye oba no ye be ma no no ye chi ni tumu ye so ye oba ana so ye be ma so ye be ma okoda mu e okoda mu ha na ni features be start ti pija pija no fu abobo ni to abobo Isi ye ba sa ane wo se yi ni fri ha. Na wu ti ye ti misa ampa. Akwa na wan de mu o prison. Nwa de mu o apartment. Ya wko ni yonko ye fu video. Beti milo komment aba. To know everyone. I'm not very good with protocols. So I'll just say all protocols observed. My name is DJ Adenju. I'm a lawyer. And I'm also a troublemaker. Thank you. I'll now leave. Give the mic to Martins. Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen. My name is uh, Martin Vincent Hotel. I am from Edo State. They call me very dark man on Instagram. Now that the camera is on me, thank God the people that move powers are here. I would like to say the people of Borono State, um, a flood carried their house, so they've contributed a lot of money for the governor and he's here to do something about them. So you people have to put focus on that before we move on. Um, uh, it's introduction, please. please. Yeah. yeah. Okay, and, um, 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 they are cool. We didn't come here to play. The trouble I was referring to is good trouble, not bad trouble. Very, very good. Trouble towards development of our nation. Trouble just introduction we want from you. Yes, my name is Deja. I've done the intro already. So I respectfully withdraw if there's any misgivings. Thank you. Chairman, all protocol duly observed. My name is Awe Rousseau Gena Muwe Esquire. I'm a legal practitioner and uh, I'm, the, I'm the counsel for Bob Risky, Idris, also known as Idris. Thank you very much. Thank you. We will come, come to that. that. Gentlemen of the press, ladies and gentlemen, this is a speech delivered by Honorable Ginger Onsibe. Chairman Joint Committees on the Investigation of Disturbing Allegations of Corruption against the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, and the Nigerian Correctional Services during the investigation hearing on Monday, 30th September 2024. 
uh, the House of Representatives New Building National Assembly Complex. I welcome you all to this very significant investigative hearing on the allegations of corruption leveled against the Economic and Financial Crime Commission and the Nigerian Correctional Service by Mr. Idris O, a popular Nigerian cross-dresser also known as Boburiti. It was reported that during his recent incarceration, Bobriski was allegedly given separate accommodation outside the facility of the Nigerian Correctional Service due to financial inducements of some personnel of the Nigerian Correctional Service. It was also reported that some EFCC operatives demanded the sum of 15 million naira as bribe to give Bobriski what is termed as soft landing in his case. Worthy of note is another financial inducement of an alleged 10 million naira to Falanax in their offer to Bobriski to facilitate his release through the Minister of Justice using presidential pardon. Flowing from the above, it is very clear that these allegations of corruption are weighty with the controversies against two of the nation's key agencies. They are symbols of national unity, honor, and discipline. Hence, all must be ready to give the fullest cooperation as we try to get to the root cause and arrival the facts of the matter. Fellow Nigerians, we may, you may agree with me that this development is very dangerous to the image of our country and democracy among the Committee of Nations, which calls for careful investigation, diligent analysis, and sober reflection. In course of our work, and looking sincerely at the terms of reference, we should be able to expose corrupt activities and risks need to keep public sector honest, transparent, and accountable, curb dishonest practices, and ensure public sector employees act in public interest. The danger of corruption in any public agency cannot be overemphasized, for it can result to financial losses, damage to employee morale, damage to its reputation, and lead to focus and resources being diverted away from delivering core statutory rules and services to the country. Corruption is an insidious plague that has a wide range of corrosive effects on the society. It undermines democracy and the rule of law and leads to violation of decent societal values. Widespread corruption deters investment weakens economic growth, and undermines the rule of law. Corruption undermines public trust in authority, which can lead to civil unrest and unnecessary political dislocations and tensions. Today, we seek through probe into the allegations of corruption in Nigeria Correctional Services and the Economic Financial Crimes Commission an unconditional comprehensive investigation into the damning allegations. You will agree with me that all allegations are reprehensible behavior, highest form of indiscipline, unprofessionalism, which must be confronted with absolute zero tolerance and severe consequences for would-be culprits. Therefore, our job as a committee is to engage in unconditional and comprehensive investigations of these allegations specified above. In fiercely resisting this scandal, which has caused serious rapture within the concerned two national agencies, this committee will not tolerate any compromise on its core values of integrity, transparency, and accountability and we must be thorough and unbiased in our investigation. In the face of these brushing challenges, and I implore all 
us all to pay adequate attention in uploading valuable guidelines, practical strategies, and vigorous perspectives to ultimately prescribe reasonable advice to relevant stakeholders and punishment as the deterrence to others in future. At this point, I want to deeply appreciate the confidence reposed on the committee and to state without missing words that the Tenth House of Representatives under the able leadership of Right Honorable Abbas Tajuddin is committed to the best global practices in delivering democratic dividends to Nigerian people. Hence, the prompt emergence of this special investigative exercise. Before I conclude, I want to call our attention to the fact that we must limit ourselves to the subject matter for which we are here today. We don't want anybody to deviate from the reasons why we are here today. And the reasons why we are here today is very clear. And I have mentioned three of them. One is that the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission was accused of demanding and receiving bribes in the sum of 50 million to remove two counts of money laundering contained in the original six count charge against Mr. Idris from the Federal High Court. Secondly, that the correctional facility collected the sum of 50 million from Mr. Idris to place him in VIP accommodation being an apartment outside the correctional facility for the duration of his prison term. Thirdly, that Mr. Femi Falana San collected the sum of 10 million naira from Mr. Idris to pursue a pardon from President Bola Ahmed Tinibu through the Minister of Justice and Attorney General of the Federation. Conclusion. As a committee, we must be able to put on our moral armor to crack severely the foundation of these weighty and devastating allegations, to try and rescue the federal agencies involved from the brink of unprecedented danger and radical. Finally, we should also be able to evolve a strategy to jointly prescribe the culture of true professional ethos within the Nigerian Correctional Services and the EFCC. God bless you all and happy deliberation. Ginger Onsibe, House Committee Chairman on Financial Crimes. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. That was the Chairman of the Joint Committee. Honorable members, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I have, may I have the permission of the chairman to me and Bob Misty. So I don't see any reason why I'll be here and Bob Misty will not be here. Now, uh, my lawyer will be the one to talk and I will not say a word because I will not want to walk out on the people that are old enough to be my father. So I won't say anything until Bob Misty is here and the ESG chairman is here. Thank you very much. Let me crave your indulgence to say that I, I do know this is Parliament presided over by the Chairman of the House Committee on Anti-Corruption and very eminent members of this committee. Let us be bound by the rules of this business. The very fundamental rule that we have as a rule of practice here in Parliament is that when a witness is invited to testify, the witness can only leave the point of testimony upon being discharged by the chairman. And so with due respect to the first witness that has been called, I want to move with the chairman that the witness so-called, as it were, goes back to the point of testimony until he's discharged by this, the chairman of this hallowed committee. 
That, that is first. Is then second, second, it is not the witness that sets the rule for parliament. Parliament has, has its rule of practice. And so to that extent, it is from the chair that will determine the rules for this proceeding. So it's the chairman that can discharge a witness, the chairman that sets the rules. So to that extent, Mr. Chairman, may I move with respect a motion that the first witness has called to testify be sworn as it is the practice of parliament. Then we'll take it up from there, Mr. Chairman. This is serious business, and uh, this is not the first time we're having an investigative hearing. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I so move. I represent the Nigerians, especially the habit of Lagos social reform. Mr. Chairman and the co-chairman and distinguished colleague, by virtue of Section 88, sub 1, sub B, this parliament has the power to invite anybody and investigate any person. Therefore, it is an aberration for a witness to come before us and say he will not say nothing. Mr. Chairman, in line with the left previous speaker, I insist, this has insist that the witness return back to the witness boss and give them the second, I hear by second. That um, Mr. Martin's visa return to the witness boss and continue with uh, his presentations. If you are in support, may you say aye? Aye. Those who are against, say nay. The eyes have it. Um, Mr. Vista, let me address you. You are the. You you don't have more to say here. All you need to do is to adopt the video you posted. That is just that. Just say it's you that posted that video and your source. We have the video already. Just say this video you you, you posted it and is this is the source. It's just the video. That is the only business you have here. Then we can ask you questions. As I earlier said, my lawyer will be the one to speak. I'm not saying anything. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for yielding the floor to me. Mr. Chairman, I, I, I do not think that taking this uh, investigative hearing seriously. Uh, I think we need to move to the next level and get him compelled. He was the one that was invited. So if he came here with his lawyer, that is his own uh, private business. He must talk to us because Parliament has invited him. And I don't think we should accept this for him at all. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, permit me to say this. I think uh, you are taking this thing so uh, simple. And uh, that is why our, one of our guests is doing what he's doing. This is parliament. We are not acting outside the constitution that empowers us as a parliament. It is bound on him, as you have called him to that witness boss, to speak to us. Even adopting whatever he has been submitted, it also has to come from what he has said before adopting it. And also I want to add, um, for those who are yet to get there, it is your submission here that is final. What you say is final. And that should be abided by. If that is not taken, you can invoke the law of the house. Thank you so much. Yeah? Maybe he, will, he may want to talk to us because um, this is a parliament. We have our rules here. You made these uh, weighty allegations. 
you are supposed to lead this process. And um, I know that uh, you thought well before you came public to make these allegations. So what I am saying is that um, you are still there on the witness bus, and we expect you to address us. It is not your duty whether Bob Risky came here or not. That one concerns us. We also have our constitutional powers to subpoena him to come here. We have those powers. So you are not expected to dictate to us what we should do. So we expect you to talk to us, but where you refuse, we can invoke the constitutional powers we have here. Thank you. Um, thank you, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, if if uh, the proceedings and also assist parties before this committee. I, I have a background as a lawyer. I practiced for over 14 years, and I hold a doctorate degree in law. I also know that even in regular court sessions, the absence of the accused person counsel or accused person himself does not stop the prosecution from continuing uh, the course of his business. And Parliament had, had issued three notices to parties, and parties are before us. Whoever is not before us, it is the business of Parliament to decide what to do, whether to issue a bench warrant from here, or whatever it is. That is the business of the committee. The, in fact, the chairman of the committee, who sits, who presides over this session. And so I, I want to state here clearly, for avoidance of doubt, that in the event, in the event that the, the gentleman who is here as a witness refuses to respect the fully constituted committee of the House sitting in its place as another mandate of the National Assembly, what you want to improve the relevant provisions of the Constitution. Parliament, uh, according to the justice of this case. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. To invite senior government officials that have come here, members of the House of Reps are gathered here based on the allegations that were made. So I think it's important to emphasize that the witness needs to speak to these allegations that were made on social media, to speak and let us understand how and why these allegations were made. You need to speak as a witness, as I've been invited, otherwise this house will exercise its powers as members have said. Senior government officials are here. The Correctional Service, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, they are all here. So it's important that you speak to these allegations that you made, please. All right. Can I? Kelechi Wogu. Why we step in here today? The gentleman there has already been administered oath here, and uh, we are elected by the people. We are not just here by our own. Our people mandated us to be here. And the House has directed that we must carry on with this investigation. We have investigated a lot of agencies, not just individuals. We are an institution like EFCC, prisons, have been mentioned. You can't sweep it under the carpet. It's like giving good uh, yeah, to look after, and the next thing somebody is telling you story. So, you are there already to testify. I will advise you go ahead, give your testimony. Nobody should mislead you. People voted for us to be here. 
The powers of this house cannot be taken for granted. I will not allow it. You will step in here and tell 360 members of the House of Representatives that you're not going to say anything. If you do that, we've not set good principle for the parliament. So I want to beg you, the power will be was on us to protect the citizens and institutions, which you also one of them. And these institutions are here. So I will plead to you to go ahead. Nobody should deceive you. And I want to plead with your lawyer. You see, we invited him, not you. You've been raising your hand. We are in charge here. Here, we are in charge. And I just want you to know that. So, you should allow your client, for here, we invited him here. Allow your client to testify. This is not, if you feel whatever we've done here, you are not okay with it. You have other routes to also express your, who you have roots to appeal. So, I hereby, Second, the motion moved by my colleague that uh, the man should go ahead. Thank you. Um, all right, um, dear uh, colleagues. Um, if uh, yes, if he needs uh, the help of his lawyer to talk, let us allow you to say what you want to say. Let's hear you. Give him the microphone. Uh, sorry, sir. Let him talk. So, so basically, uh, basically, what he's saying is that the person who made all the allegations against the security agencies is not here. The person does not respect this house. That's what he's saying. That, no, number two, number two. I'm going to go. I'm going to. I'm not. I'm just reechoing what we have discussed. Number two, number two. He's saying that he has not said he's not going to speak. At least we came prepared. We came with almost everything that is needed by this committee here. We have even come with additional evidence that is not even available online. We have come with everything. So he's he's not saying I don't want to assist the committee. I don't want to talk. He's saying because that person, who should be here, who is not here, who has sent a lawyer to represent uh, he, he or she, that, that he too is not going to talk directly, that he's going to talk to his counsel. That's just all he's saying and nothing more. In addition, um, I would like to say the man from my state, um, he said, uh, if I don't speak, they will, they will, they will, they will move a motion to detain me. I will not mind being detained until I will not mind. Oh God, let me. Sorry, sorry, please. And also in the voice notes, Bobriski says something about a Godfather. So it's obvious that there is a Godfather somewhere that might maybe told him not to come, and then nothing will happen because he has disrespected everybody here by not coming. And you are trying to force me to talk, and you are already throwing a little threat that you detain me. I will stay in the cell. And this is not my first time. It's not my second time. So I'll go and stay there until he's ready. But for now, I will not say anything. If I say anything, let me die. It's okay. Um, uh, the Leonard Council, we have taken note of the fact that uh, Bob Brisk is not here. It is on us to decide the next line of action, not on you. He has let us know that. You came here prepared. Uh, why, why don't, don't you, you allow your client to make his speeches and adopt the documents here and submit it? Yeah. Because, let me tell you, excuse me, excuse me. Yes, excuse me. Order, please. We didn't come here to play. We did not come here to play. That Bobriski is not here. He is not the only person we invited. We invited EFCC, they are here. Members of the Correctional Services, they are here. 
there are other people who are also here. Even the prosecutor is here. The man you are accusing that withdrew the charges is here. It's not only Bobrisky. The same people that are accused of uh, collecting money and uh, moving, moving him from uh, the medium prison to elsewhere, they are also here. So it's not only Bobrisky that is here. We can take you people today, take uh, Correction Act, take EFCC. If Bobrisky did not arrive at the end of this section, we will also take a decision on it. So uh, I don't think uh, we should be begging or pleading with you people to take care of this, to talk on this. I don't think so. We, 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 we don't even want any legal representation here. Your client is here. He is here, life and body. So this controversy don't need to arise at all. Yes. Mr. Chairman, honorable colleagues. Mr. Chairman, honorable colleagues. Um, there's a saying where we come from that a clear conscience will ultimately fear no accusation. I see no reason why an adaptation of his documents, both online and the additional ones which you have said you have brought, cannot be made but to make a mockery of the House and say you will not speak and if you speak you will die. It's not civil, which I expect us all to be at this point. We are not prosecuting him. We are trying to find out and get to the root of this very heinous and grievous allegations made to state officials. So, um, my brother is legal uh, uh, counsel. I, 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 I implore you to speak to your client to do the need for and move forward. Bob Brisky, whether he, she, it is not here. It, 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 is, it, is, it, is, it is irrelevant because when he, she, whatever is going to be spoken to, if he's not here, if he's not here, then we will handle that issue there. The Economic Crimes Commission is here. The Correctional Services are here. So let us move forward, my dear brother. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, are you? Mr. Chairman, missing him or not, that Bobrisky, who is the center of this matter, should be properly addressed so that we do not send a wrong signal. Already Bobrisky is, is claiming to be untouchable. He's claiming, he's claiming to be untouchable. He has put the EFCC in bad light. He has put the cholesterol uh, uh, services in very bad light. And this young man, even though his, uh, his speech is very, very is unbecoming, I do not support the way you have spoken here. But let this young man not use us to shine. We must do the proper thing. But Brisky should be addressed, issues should be addressed properly. If the man says, I talked about Bob Risky, and the Bob Risky is not here, please, I want him to be here so that you will hear what I will say. Bob Risky should be brought here. Please, my dear colleagues, let's not... I'm saying as a caution, if you want me to move it, it, it will be... If it is a motion, I thereby move that Bob Risky Okay, if we are not there yet. Um, um, we are not... Honorable, we have noted what you have said. 
Order. Order, please. Order, please. We have noted what you have, you have said. Nobody amongst us here is saying that because Bobriski did not come here today, that he, will, he, he or she will not come here. What we are saying is that we are not there yet. We have our order here. When it gets to him and he is not here, we will also deal with that. So that is what we are saying. So, um, cancel. Cancel. Yes, can you confer with him so that he can make presentation and tender whatever you have to us? Cancel. Are you okay now? Yes. Yeah. So can we proceed? Order, please. Can we proceed? Can we proceed? I go on to speak now. So, initially I say if I speak, let me die. I will not die again. So, I will just go on to... Now, um, in the video I posted online, I explained everything. For the people that saw the video, it was well detailed and well explained. Um, how I got hold of that um, recording... It's as a result of Bob Risky blackmailing somebody he owes money. So, according to the story and according to the evidence that a proof of chat that was sent to me, um, the person borrowed Bob Risky 4 million naira when Bob Risky was in the EFCC detention, or rather, in the private apartment lodge. Um, the person gave him the money on the Sorry, excuse me. On the 19th, 6, 2024, the person gave him the money, 4 million naira. It was transferred to this account number, 0496411279. Abiola Okunaye, and as you know, Bob Risky's name is Okunaye, so apparently, Kuda, Kuda, Kuda Bank. So um, apparently, it's his brother's account. 
So when it was time to get the money back, according to the story the guy told me and the evidence I saw, he told Bobrisky he needed to, he wanted that money to complete his building in Lagos. So that was why I borrowed him the money. It was now time to pay. From the receipt I have here, he sent him a message. Bobrisky refused to respond. Sent him another one after like few days. Bobrisky also refused to respond. When Bobrisky eventually responded, Bobrisky said, um, I'm going to give you the money in, I think, September. So September 1st, the guy reached out to Bobrisky again. Bobrisky refused. And the next thing that followed it was blackmail. He said, um, I will tell them that you are smooshing me and you are kissing me. So the guy felt very, very somehow because felt like he was not going to get his money. God so kind, there's a very dark man that has the platform to call out the people that owes money and they will pay. So, a friend of mine who is very popular contacted me and he said, VDM, see what's going on. And I said, okay, no problem. If you have received, send it. Then, um, when he sent it, now I'll say something here. When he sent it, immediately I made a video, I first video and I said, but Briska, I'm giving you four hours to pay back. Then he started begging the guy. Now, what I'm going to say now, my lawyer does not even know. Now, he started begging the guy, then he paid. Immediately, he paid. But when I listened to the audio, I said, nah, even though you paid, this has to go there, out there, man. Because EFCC cannot go around harassing some boys, young boys, and somebody with a godfather will be pulling stunts. I was detained in the prison. My very good friend, Sean Kuti, was detained as well. A lot of boys are inside the prison. Bobinski is not any way better than them. So I didn't see any reason why I should keep the audio. I kept the receipt of his payment, which he paid that day. He paid that day. So immediately I got it, I just smiled. So he was actually guilty. But here's the thing. Bobinski didn't know that this guy recorded everything. But because Bobinski, obviously I have the platform, yeah? He understands how I roll. So he quickly paid. But I said, no, it has to go there. Now, I need to clarify something about um, Femi Falano and um, the Falano Chambers. Because apparently right now, some people are taking advantage of um, what is going on to target um, Femi Falano. And um, I would like to still say here now that um, I apologize to him for the dent on his name. But however, it's so sad that his name was inside that audio. I could not believe it as well. That was why I, that was the part that even irritated me more, which I said, I refuse to believe that it will be part and party to something like that, that would make people take somebody out of prison and to get a pardon. So, um, yeah, I have the recording. I have one part. I can't give you guys the whole part because I don't know if Bobby's kid godfather is here to collect everything. So I'll give you one part of it, then maybe when another time, I can give you the complete audio. Furthermore, if he denies that one, I have another one that he does not even know about. So I am very, very ready. The reason why I wanted him to be here, I wanted to be looking directly into his eyes, so that he will understand that Nigeria is not for the godfathers. Yes, Nigeria is not for the Godfathers. I will not allow corruption. If I see a secret about you, Oga, I will tell. Oga, even you that say you prove me outside, inside, I will tell. Especially you, I will tell. I will make sure everybody knows. And I'm being very, very honest. I will not fear anything. I'll put it out there because Nigeria has gone down. Now, I will implore you people to actually do the right thing because the judiciary system is messed up so bad. It's messed up so bad. You people have to save your face. I believe a lot of APC members are here. So if you need to save yourself. It's APC, okay, it's, it's okay. okay. Can we... <laughs> can, can you tender, can you tender, can you tender, can you tender what you have to the clerk? Hello? The clerk. Can you tender it to the clerk? You... Alright, so I'll state the things I'll be giving. Okay. So I'm giving him the flash that contains the first audio recording. 
of about 5 minutes 36 seconds. And then I'm giving him the first receipt for transaction the guy made to Bob Risky. Also, some part of the charts. And then the return of the money, which was on the on Tuesday, September 24th, on Tuesday, just few six days ago, I think. Then um, the chart acknowledging when he wants to, when he was disturbing the guy that he wants to refund immediately after he saw my video. And then um, yes, the charts and the charts where he blackmailed the guy. There's a particular place where he blackmailed the guy. Um, the chart also asking for the money. As a reminder, we wouldn't like to read one part for September 4th. He said, Dear Bob Risky, this is a reminder for the return of the loan amount of 4 million naira as agreed. The due date for the return is September 1st. Mind you, this September 1st, it was Bob Risky that gave him the date. Then he said, Kindly use the attachment account details to send the refund. Then he sent his account number. So because he didn't get it, he came to me. So I'll read the part of the blackmail that made him. Yes, I would like to verify that the guy said he's not gay. I don't know, I don't live with him, but I ask it. So he said he's not gay. Okay, so this part, um, after requesting... Sorry. Okay, I'll see bring more parts. So this part, the guy went on saying things like, I helped you when you needed help. When it's time to pay me back, you have been stressing me, this is not fair. How will you pay me like this? Then Bob Risky went on to say, when you kiss me and smoosh me, did you give me any money? Are you mad? Your visit to Nigeria that you kissed me in Lagos, did you give me anything? I didn't ask you for money. No, because I am fucking okay. If not EFCC, you think I'm going to ask you for money? Does that mean it's because of EFCC is asking for the money? <laughs> Uh, so if not ESCC, um, do you think I'm going to ask you for money? You are typing all this message to someone, help you post flyers without collecting, collecting anything from you. Wow. Go ahead and call me out. I will respond to you on IG. You know I am shameless and I don't care. You will get your money. I have your account. I don't want to look like someone that is ungrateful. But threatening me that you give me 24 hours is the height of it. I am waiting for you to post or call me out. So apparently the guy told him he was going to tell me. So these are the evidence I'm going to present for now. Ad additionally, after this, there's a second one and there's a third one, of course. Okay. Um, and I'll give you everything. Thank you. Um, uh, dear colleagues, uh, do you have any... Okay. Well, I would just need... He has received it. The clerk has received it. They have done that. Let's, Let's take, take uh, uh, you have received the clock. Okay, okay, good. I think he has he mentioned has all of them. them. It's listed. It's, it's listed. listed. So, My name is Kafila Tokbara. I represent Koshofer Federal Constituency. I'm from Lagos State, the Center of Excellence. Honestly, I can't believe I'm sitting in this house because of, uh, as an individual, I'm speaking as an individual now, because of a Bob Risky or a very dark man. Because this house has very, very important things to do. In fact, a lot of us have like three, four meetings holding somewhere else that we are supposed to be attending. But we are here because of our institutions that have been mentioned in the matter. And then we have somebody come here that say that he will die if he has to speak. And you have finally spoken. Hello. You have finally, you have finally spoken, and we are happy that you have spoken. Before now, we are supposed to have had all the necessary documents, even before we came here. I called the clerk now to ask him that what documents do we as committee members have to work with before we even came here in the first place? We don't have any documents here to work with, and we are just collecting the documents here now. This is very, very untidy. And our institutions that are here, we need them to defend themselves. There are a lot of fake news in the air. And I'm also aware that Bobisky has sued for a billion naira, claiming that the voice note is AI generated. Whatever it is, we don't have by the, um, the, the Bobisky lawyer that is here. What is the reason why Bobisky is not here? Is there any serious reason 
why he or she is not here. Is he sick or what? So we need to know. So please, I I want to appeal. I want to appeal that the aspect that concerns our institutions should be addressed. Let us know where we are going. We have very serious matters to attend to. Thank you very much. That member representing you know, Ojuabifera constituency and from Benue State. Uh, Mr. Martins, yes, sir. I had listened to you, though you didn't die after you spoke. Exactly. <laughs> and I pray you will not die. Amen. And such negative things will not come out from your mouth again. Amen. Uh, while you were speaking, I was listening keenly. I was trying to ask myself, where is that evidence that is really connecting the security agencies or this institution? Because from your narration, I discovered that it's just a mention of, oh, this said this and that said this. Though I, at the final stage, you said um, that you have second phase, third phase, probably fourth uh, phase document to submit. I really want you to establish for us the connection that brought about this corruption that was highly mentioned, especially at the EFCC and that of the Correctional Center. That is where the book question is. And also, I was said here, let me tell you, if some of these things is not clarified, they might think also that they have bribed us to the lawmakers. And this will not be taken lightly because for some of us that are seated there, we are here to defend our country and this honorable institution. So I really need you to throw light to tell us what is the connection these two agencies. I really want to know what is really your evidence to that, to some of those things that have been asked. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. All right. Uh, this is the main reason why I said Bob Risky should be here. I think now you understand why. Uh, this question is supposed to be for Bob Risky. He was the one that used his own mouth. He has the experience. He went to the prison. He was the one that moved. He was the one that said they took him to a special prison. It is not me. You can't ask me that. I'm sorry, sir. So, um, the evidence, you can get it. I'll break it down. The account number he used when he was in detention, because according to him, he said it here, if not for EFCC, meaning his own main account was maybe frozen. So he used his brother's account. So the account should be investigated. All the money that went in and went out of it should be investigated to actually get the evidence that you need. Also, why this is actually believable for me, there was money laundering charges, everybody knows. From nowhere, no more money laundering charges. There was. From nowhere, it disappeared. Why? That made sense to me. That was why I said, okay, this is what it is. So thank you very much, sir. Um, uh, dear colleagues, we will be listening to uh, members of the Nigerian Correctional Services. When we must have listened to all these people, this thing will start making sense to you people. His own is clear. If you have watched the video, he is not the person speaking in the video or in the audio. Uh, so, is the allegations we had in the audio. That is what we are investigating. He has tendered it, if I'm correct. He has tendered it and we have accepted it. It is our duty to investigate to the letter of these allegations. Even we will involve even the network providers. I can assure you that we will get to the root. The issue of whether he was detained in the uh, 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 medium or maximum. We are also going to listen to these people here today. So let us not rush some of these things. If we have any other person who wants to ask questions to him, so that let him take his questions, we can bring the next people to this place. I told that uh, we, we don't misunderstand ourselves outside the pressings of parliament. The essence I moved the motion first and foremost. My name is Dr. Patrick Gumo. I moved that motion for this investigation to be carried out. 
Now, the investigative hearing is premised on the fact that there are two principal institutions created by acts of parliament. The first is the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, and the second is the Nigerian Correctional Service. And as an institution of parliament, we have a duty to protect the image of our country. And it is just not enough. It is not just enough for us to fold our arms and watch either the veracity of what is said or the propaganda against our institutions. And so it is this kind of investigative hearing that will expose the, the veracity, the correctness or otherwise, of what is on ground. As a parliament, we are not here because of Bob Risky or Very Dark Man. We are here because two principal institutions of the Federal Republic of Nigeria are affected, and that is the EFCC and the Correctional Service. And again, this is not to prejudice whatever investigations we are going to do. This is also to send a signal to the media community, because we are in very rough times that mere statements made against institutions such as the EFCC or the Nigerian Correctional Service can bring down the country. Whatever this means, this is the point to go with. If we allow mere propaganda to thrive without having this kind of investigative hearing, then we are in trouble in our country. And so this is why we have this investigative hearing. It is not about white, uh, it is not about very dark man or Bob Risky. We are not interested in your private affairs. And again, like I said, not to prejudice whatever investigations we are carrying out. Uh, you, my little friend knows, and many other lawyers who are here know, that he who asserts, the onus is on him to prove. So that is the weight of the evidence. If when you assert, you must prove, because you are the one who has brought this to the fore. That's one. And then two, my little friend also knows that a prosecution in regular court cases can amend charges, can withdraw, can drop charges. In fact, that is why it is in law allowed for even the Attorney General to, to enter and only prosecute. So that's the law. So we, I, we are not there yet, but I'm just, that's why I said I don't want to say this to prejudice anything. But then be that as it may, be that as it may, gentlemen, please, I am protected by the chairman. Be, be that as it may, be that as it may, you have evidence to tender. You should have the confidence of parliament. Most of us who are here, listen, most of us who are here are here because we are representing the conscience, the collective conscience of Nigerians. And for most of us to spend time to sit down and participate in this hearing, we are interested in this country. Now, when you tender documents in part, you are not helping this investigation. But if you tender your documents properly and in full, we would mark them accordingly and then take your the, the take uh, the other parties or the other witnesses we will call accordingly and you help us in our investigation if you turn that in part your lawyer knows you are not helping this investigation and then you have no discretion as far as tendering of documents is concerned counsel please i i I'm, I'm talking you don't confuse it you don't have discretion whatsoever before parliament to choose to pick and choose what documents to tender we will foreclose you if you cannot tender all your documents and move to call the next witness. Thank you very much. All right. Um, sir, you see the reason why I refuse to tender everything I had. You, you, you heard what the woman said. But you see, I've said that it is AI. They have sold you one billion. I know that. You understand? They're already calling it AI. Now, the good part I have proves that it's not AI. You see the point? I know why I did that. You understand? Because if she is concluding that she was sounding as if she's Bob Risky's lawyer, saying Bob Risky has said he's AI, he's suing one billion. Do you understand? So this is why I would not tender it. Um, um, order, please. Order. 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 Um, dear colleagues. Um, I think, um, okay, let us take the last, the last speaker on this, so that we can go to the next turn.
Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. My name is Kabir Tukura, and I represent Suru Fakai Dongko Sabu and Sakama Federal Constituency Institutions. I would want to call on very dark one. Very dark one, you must respect this house. And to respect this house, you must not ridicule or make a caricature of any of its members. And I want you to withdraw the statement on addressing Honorable Kafilat Akbara, how she speaks and all of that. It is very disrespectful, and that is not good. And you should withdraw that statement. That on the side. Mr. Chairman, a lot of speakers have spoken. And that this investigation is not about very dark man or Bobrisky. That's true. In as much as you cannot take them out of it because they are the uh, principal actors. What I want us to understand principally is there was an allegation. And that allegation stemmed from that phone recording. So whatever we do here, whatever we do here, if we don't listen to that recording, I think we are leaving the crux of the matter. So I urge us to allow the media to play that recording for us to listen to. And then from there we take on, on what we need to do. I so move, Mr. Chairman. Um, um, excuse me, please, please. And uh, Mr. Mattis, can you withdraw? Uh, you you made two statements. One against your uh, brother from Edo, and the other one against uh, uh, Honorable Kafilat. Can you withdraw it so that uh, we can proceed? I withdraw the statements made to our elder statesman from Edo State. I'm very sorry, sir. And Mama, I'm also very, very sorry, and I withdraw it. Thank you very much. The audio. I think I posted, I posted that audio on our platforms. And uh, I posted that audio day before yesterday to allow members to listen to it so that I don't think there is a different audio he has. And he has submitted it. Hello? A different audio, but there is more to the audio. So I gave you what I actually brought here. I'm not sure if I brought the complete one, but what I have here is what you have heard. It's actually an 11 minutes, over 11 minutes audio, where I broke it down and posted the half, and then there's another one. So, um, but, yes, but it portrays the same thing, but at least it's, it's a better proof. It's wait here, wait here. It's wait here. Okay, um, can we allow him to go and sit down? Uh, please go and sit down. Clark, who is the next person? Um, in, in absence of uh, Mr. Okunaya Idris uh, or Larry Waju, uh, Mr. Okunaya Idris or Larry Waju, aka Bob Risky, aka Bob Risky, Mr. Okunaya Idris or Larry Waju, aka Bob Risky. Um, dear colleagues. I don't, I don't think, think uh, uh, it's in the culture of this uh, parliament to have legal representations in uh, issues like this. So we are not going to accept legal representation. Like I said before, uh, when we get to every stage, we address it. This is the time now for us to address the issue of the absence of uh, Mr. Idris. Yeah. Is it? Okay, uh, legal counsel, can you tell us why uh, he is not here? Thank you. Mr. Chairman, sir. I want to apologize for the absence of my clients.
But I also want to state uh, something on record. Your name. The institution of this panel. He's not feeling fine. He's not feeling fine. He's under the weather. Excuse me. Sir? Order, please. Order, please. Order, please. No, order, please. Let's hear him. Let's hear him. Let's hear him. Go straight to the point, please. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Okuneye Idris is unavailable absence because of his ill health. But I came in from Lagos this morning to, you know, to show respect to the, uh, to the com uh, committee. Now, the issue of... It's okay, okay, it's okay. okay. That's, That's okay. okay. No, no. no. It's okay. He's not here. No, I, I think I'm here. No, he, no. No, 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 no. No. He, he's not here. No. Okay, okay. We have had you. We have had you. Yes. He is not feeling fine. I will now open the floor for our members to react to it. And I represent the good people of Okwa uh, East and West Federal Constituency in Abia State. Mr. Chairman, uh, the attorney that has come to represent uh, Bob Risky has just told us that he is not here because he's in this post, correct? He said he's not feeling well, not so. Do you have any letter from the doctor to or medical report? So that you should have said it. For you to have come here and given all that kind of face skills, you should have, you should have been accompanied with a medical report to say that he's so unwell that he cannot be here. So please, when next we invite him, we hope he will be well by that time. Thank you. My name is Honorable Engineer Dominic Ifai Chibokapo. I know that our letter was addressed specifically to Bob Risky. The council, can you give us a letter from here? Because anybody can come here and claim that it's a um, council. Is there any letter you have here to confirm to us that you're actually representing him? The authority letter you have from him. Thank you. Carry. We, we are going to invite uh, Mr. Okun, Okunenye Idris uh, in our next uh, hearing. The next person, Clark. May I humbly invite Michael? Mr. Chairman. Hello. Mr. Chairman, honorable members of the House, the Distinguished Controller General of Corrections, Chairman EFCC, very senior colleagues, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, good evening. My name is Michael Benson Anokwa, Deputy Controller of Corrections and the Officer in Charge, Medium Security Custodial Facility in Kirikiri, Lagos. And I stand here to defend that Idris Okuneye Olare Waju was entered into the Nigerian Correctional Facility Medium Security Custodial Center in Lagos on the 12th of on the 12th of April with a valid warrant and a transfer order from ECOE Medium Security Custodial Facility. The warrant the warrant was endorsed to me by the Deputy Controller of Corrections in charge ECOE facility on the same day of his 
conviction. This is the warrant, and I believe strongly is attached to the documents that we have submitted to the committee. The biometrics of Idris Okune Olarewaju was taken the next day because the time he came was around 10.30 p.m. So we could not do the biometrics on that day. So we did the biometrics on the 13th of on the 13th of Hello, sorry. On the 13th of April 2024, I want to get the biometric picture, please. You don't need to. It's there. I don't know where it is. Where is that? Yes. You should just go ahead. Give me the biometrics. This is the biometrics picture of capturing of uh, Idris Okuneye Olare Waju on admission on the 13th of April 2024 at Medium Security Custodial Center in Lagos. During the time that he spent at Medium, because Idris spent 10 days at Medium facility in Lagos. 10 days. He spent 10 days, 12 to 20 seconds. Idris Okuneye Ola Rewaju, refusing to eat prisons or corrections ration, decided to apply for self feeding self-feeding is is approved in our laws and this is the photocopy of the approval application for self-feeding where he nominated i'll get the original for you the original is also here So the application for self-feeding was approved, and he, he, Idris Okune, and nominated two persons that were bringing his food to the facility within the period he was there. The persons he nominated were Okune Idris, sorry, um, Okune Abiola. Okuneye Abiola and Moji Okuneye. Okuneye Abiola and Moji Okuneye. Then his health screening was done. During the admission, we discovered that Idris had a peculiar um, features that can not allow us to put him in a general apartment. What are the peculiar features? Pictures, please. 
Idris Okuneye Olarewaju, though male, had some female features like a breast. He has a breast. Yes. This is the medical, the original of the medical examination done by the facilities medical practitioner, a qualified doctor, Dr. Ifoma Opalopa. In this, we had the admission board had to enter into a meeting to discuss on the best practices and the best way to manage him. Then we arrived at the conclusion that we have to put him in a protective custody, which we did. And uh, he spent his time at medium, the 10 days, in our P ward room two. P ward room two of the facility. And alone in that particular room. Why we did that is that because we have to abide by the international best practices and according to the, our laws. If you look at the Correction Act, Chapter 2A, 2-1-A, you find out that we have to abide by the international human rights as approved by the United Nations. And because of the United Nations Act, that Chapter 2-1-A, of the Corrections Act, and also Chapter 13 of the Corrections Act, 1A, I to V. 1A, I to V. It's section, sorry. Section. Section 13, 1A, I to V, where we have to ask, uh, look at certain features of an inmate before we use a particular management style. Um, corrections management is not done on social media. It's not done on the pages of the newspaper. It is a professional job done by well-trained officers for corrections management. And everybody, notwithstanding that our laws maybe have not actually recognized the issue of someone being a transgender, but we have to protect him. His rights. His rights are sacrosanct. His rights is important for us to protect. And that is why we, have, we don't have to, if we throw him into a general cell, before the next morning they'll bring out a dead body. Because there are a lot of people there who are convicted and are standing trial for rape and uh, even uh, sodomy. So we cannot allow that. If we had allowed that to happen, the same public that are clapping for VDM and uh, Bobriski today will we'll begin to cast aspersions on the Nigerian Correctional Service for not managing Bobriski well. Now, during the time that Bob spent at the Nigerian Correctional Facility, Medium Security Custodial, don't worry, Medium Security Custodial Center, Kiri Kiri Lagos, Idris Okuneye Olarewaju had a total of 39 visitors. 39 visitors. I have the record here. And the visit form that we have, we designed, that we use, the visit form has position for the name of the visitor, the visit date, the visitor's address, visitor's phone number, visitor's occupation, the name of the inmate that, has been, has, uh, that is to receive the visit, a relationship with the visit, visitor, and the inmate's the inmate's consent. Before you see an inmate, the inmate will have to consent that he or she wants to see you. So after filling the form on 13th, 13th April 2024, Idris Okuneye Olarewaju had five, six visitors. 
Abi ojo kuneye, kai ojo kuneye, adebolo kuneye, abiola, abiola okuneye, bukola okuneye, and Mrs. Moji okuneye. These are the six that visited on the on the thirteenth. On the fourteenth, he had one visitor. The legal counsel, barrister Nike Gone Caves. All these people, their addresses and phone numbers are here. Please, for please, spare us of those things. Okay. Just so, and the visitors that came, all their biometrics are here attended. I think we have tendered it to the, to the chairman or to the body. So, in, on the whole, he had 39 visitors that visited him. Uh, that was 13th to 21st. Those who came to this time. Then on the 21st, I, Michael Benson, and the Deputy Controller of Corrections, took permission from my command controller to travel to our Corrections Academy at Ijebibo to write my command course exam, which was to come up the next day, 22nd. So, and Idris visits, I handle it personally. So, on the 22nd, I was not available in the facility. I went to Jebibo. When my controller put a call across and told me that he is moving him to maximum on security, for security reasons. He's not supposed to tell me. He's a command, uh, command controller. But he gave me that respect and called me to tell me that look at look at look at i said no problem sir go ahead and he was moved to maximum on the 22nd of april 2022 so the account i gave is what happened at medium between 12th and the 21st of april 2022 thank you sir We have, we have yes, yes we we'll take it one by one please we have uh, listened to him um i understand that um what category of people do you keep uh at the medium uh, uh security and what category of offenses do you keep at uh, maximum Thank you, sir. As the name implies, medium security. Mostly, the people we keep at uh, medium security custodial center are mostly minor offense offenders and first offenders as as well. So it's um, sometimes that we have because of overflow of the big custodial centers that manage big offenders that they bring some of those big offenders to medium to give space. In the, you, it was there an overflow because I want to know the reason why you should take somebody who just uh, committed uh, an offense of uh, abuse of Naira to maximum uh, security where you keep people who committed maximum uh, uh, capital, capital offenses. Because I want to know, because it's at this point that we need to trace this allegation of the fact that he was not kept, he was kept outside the uh, 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 prison environment. Because I want to know why he was moved from the medium to the maximum. What is the reason? Okay, sir. The, the reason is, one, there was social media hype. Because Idris' friends and some family members donated chairs, 21 plastic chairs, to the visit area environment that doesn't have, they have the inconvenient chairs. Chairs were not enough. So when they come to visit sometimes, hello, when they come to visit sometimes, they discover that there is lack of chairs. So they went and donated chairs and put road and uh, wrote the name of Idris Okuneye Olarewaju as the donor, uh, as, the, as the donor. Then it, the next minute it went viral on social media, sensing that this may cause security breach, 
the controller took action. Who, who moved him? Who moved him? I was not present, but my... I was not present, but let me tell you. Excuse me, are you, are you trying to say... Are you trying to say that up till now, even when you came back, you don't know who moved him? No, I said my, com my command controller. Order, please, order, order. They should, uh, people need to understand our hierarchy. We have a hierarchy. Yeah. We have a controller general. That's what we I'm saying. Who, who, who moved him? The state command controller is in charge of the whole of Lagos State. He can move into any facility. If is it the state, state is it the state, state controller that moved yes, him? Yes, it's the state controller, sir. Good. Um, I hope you have cameras around the premises, CCTV, around the premises of the uh, prisons, the correctional facility. Sir, medium, yeah, I, no. You don't have cameras? In, in medium, we don't have. Excuse me. Do you have cameras in the maximum? In maximum, we have. In medium, we don't have. Can, we, can you tender cameras from when he came into the maximum and also when he left the maximum? I'm not the officer in charge maximum. No, the, the question is a general question because they are listening. Because we want your leadership to give us a footage of the CCTV of when Bobrisky came into the maximum and when he left the maximum. Secondly, like we have tendered the, the visitor's role, uh, role book, yes, sir. how they visited him in the medium. We also want to have the visitor's I hope you came with it, how he was visited, visitors register, how he was visited when he was in the uh, maximum. Sir, with all due respect, the officer in charge maximum is here. I think he can Yeah, he, he's coming on board. So, um, I'm done. Okay, let's, let's start. Bob Risky as a high-profile uh, inmate, not so. The question I want to ask you, you, you have told us here, Sorry, Sorry, sir. You asked me a question, but you answered it. No, I'm not done. I'm not done. Okay. Uh, please, I still have the floor. Um, you told us that Bob Risky has a very special feature, not so, yes, that sir. he developed a breast. Or he has breast, not so. And uh, hips Which, as well. And hips, yes. no problem. So did you, when you were entering his details, was he classified as a woman? Yes or no? So we don't have right. No, no, no. Was he classified? No, Wait, no, no. we don't answer that. Was he classified? He's, he's a male. He's a male as male. So what was the, the, the business telling all that because he has breast, he has a uh, nash, uh, that his case has to be treated in a different way? That's number two question. Can I, number can I number three that? question. Let me finish, please. Number three question. He also did say, he did mention to us that uh, they were bringing his food from outside. Correct? He was not eating the uh, prison food, not so. If you are in time, yes. Uh, his food was coming from outside. Okay. Is it allowed by law? Yes, sir. sir. What if they had poisoned the food and he dies in your cousin? No, what would have happened? We have our, we have our rules. Okay. Thank you very much. That's, my, that's all I have for now. The controller had to intervene. The donation no, sir. was made by the is it, My question, question is, is, is it the, the, the donation sir. was made... Sir, hold on, hold on, please. Is it yes or no? Is it the tradition that an inmate in custody can make donations while they are in custody? No. All right. So, uh, then, then, going to my other question, if you look at... Page it, sir. Oh, Do you have it? Okay, Mr. Chairman, I have requested for two documents. The first one is the paperwork the day he was admitted, and the second one is a discharge letter 
the day he was moved from that media security and you have an admittance letter when you took him to the maximum i have heard that okay mr chairman i'm requesting for that as well and officer now don't you think the donation of those chairs would have influenced the movement of mr okunaye from medium to maximum that was what influenced it sir no don't you think that would have influenced because when we talk about corruption yes that an inmate donating to the correctional facility now i asked before you said no it's not a tradition but yet you re you received it and you accepted it sir i want to tell you i told you and you wrote hold on sir the chairs even came with his name imprinted on them, correct? He was not the one that received it, sir. I told you that I traveled. Sir, you are representing your institution. Yes, but I will tell you. Sir, are you, re are you representing your institution? You are old, sir. Be careful. I know. So if you are old, be careful what you say. Do you remember that I said I went for exam on the 21st? After the first visit, it was there that I was told that these chairs came and it cost sir are you, are you speaking on your personal capacity or you are speaking on behalf of your institution i'm speaking i'm, I'm speaking in my personal capacity as the so who is going to speak on behalf of your institution sir i hope you know why you are here the sorry sir my controller is here okay all right so well let me let me finish the questions mr chairman i've requested I have requested for those documents and I wish they will be submitted. I want to yield back. Thank you very much. From a facility to another facility, issues from the state controller, the command controller. He will give his authorization in writing. And when you receive the authorization, you write your own transfer later to the next um, the next facility where the inmate is going there is two forms that we complete that will accompany the letter form 5 and form 5a those two forms you send it to state controller to sign it when the state controller signs that form 5 and 5a you come to your facility and keep the form 5 as the evidence of the movement and use the form 5A and your letter to carry the inmate to the next facility. When you get to the next facility, there's what we call body receipt. Body receipt will be issued to you by the records officer in that facility to, to accept that they receive this particular inmate. All those documents, I submitted them, sir. Thank you, sir. The, the documents are attached to the uh, analysis that I submitted to the house. The operational manual is not there. We can submit that one later. It's okay. Uh -huh. Thank you. I just have a simple question, officer. I did find out that you don't know where to put it, whether a man or a woman, that you had a meeting, emergency meeting. Can you forward... Uh, furnish us with the minutes of that meeting, the people that attended that meeting, and how the resolution was taken, in line with the procedure of correctional act. Once the minutes of that meeting, those that participated in that meeting, and the resolution that informed that decision, that is one. Secondly, you may mention that you move into B word B1 room 2. Yes, sir. What are the facilities in that B1? B? Is B1? B, 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 B? Thank you. Precious one. Can I answer the question, sir? Okay. The admission of inmates to a facility is done by a board. 
and that board is called admission board. The admission board is chaired by the officer in charge. The members of the admission board include the record officer, the in charge welfare, the in charge medical, and the caterer. Most other ad hoc members may be the in charge industry or workshop, as the case may be. So during that period, we may not have um, a detailed minutes of meeting where we decided it has to be this. We have to uh, talk to each other. I am the officer in charge of the facility and remain the officer in charge. So and we, I won't be there. Like he will say that nobody, uh, elders should not be at home and they go to give birth while he's tied on the rope. I will not be there because I want to please the public. I, I, I break the law of the land. During uh, admission, there's what we call classification of inmates. During classification, you classify by offense, you classify by sex or gender, you classify by age, you classify by inherent health challenges, and some other factors that we consider. Now, in the case of uh, Idris Okne, it was peculiar. And we have to take a peculiar decision to at uh, attack a peculiar situation. And the decision we took was, this is a, a block of cell of small, small rooms. Everybody in his own room, every, each of those rooms have a toilet inside of it. So, which means he can stay there. Uh, additional measures that I took is that I posted a, a staff to be standby on that particular place. Each time, if you, if you bring our duty roster, you see it. We moved the staff who was there for the whole 10 days that Bob spent in media. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I'm still speaking with my voice, Kafila Tobara from Lagos State. I have just one question. As male or female was determined. On the 13th, sir, during admission. It's a yes or no. We don't need story at this stage. We, we, okay, okay. Sorry, sir. Conviction. Sorry, sir. We admit people with what they got come, comes of. What Whatever is in the warrant is what we admit. What we don't add, we don't report. What was on the warrant? Mail. Yes, sir. And so the, the issue is clear. And so we are within the box that he was he is male. Nigeria does not, they, there is no law in Nigeria that recognizes transgender. All these things you're talking about. Anyway, I'll leave it to the chairman for, for the ruling. But the issue is that there is no law in Nigeria today that talks about a transgender. So you are male or you are female. And the conviction, the sentence you had will always show those details. That ABC is convicted, he's male, and then you take the person to the precise place he should be. So anyway, I'm sure we'll have better questions to ask your superior. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I'm yielding him the microphone, sir. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, the co-chairman, honorable members, Controller General of Correction, Chairman EFCC, Medicine Officers, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. My name is Ben Rabbi Friedman, Assistant Controller General of Correction, in charge of Zone A. Zone A covers Lagos State and Ogun State. I was the controller of correction. In fact, the immediate past controller of correction in charge of Lagos State. Mr. Chairman, I have a 20 years cognitive experience. Controller of correction in three commands and I've headed eight custodial centers and facilities across the country. On the 12th of April, 2024, at about 15.30 hours, I got a call from the Deputy Controller of Correction in charge of ECOE Medium Security Custodial Center that it is Okuneye Olariwaju, popularly known as Bob Risky, have been sentenced at Federal High Court, Ikoi, and that they are on their way to Ikoi Custodial Center with a large crowd, the crowd of fans at the court premises followed them to Ikoi Custodial Center. And uh, it, it was such that the facility 
Ikoi, in the center of the town, some wished by urbanization, the traffic jam, the gridlock within that Ikoi axis, got up to Falomo, and even that were returning from court, could not have access to our facility. On the strength of that, post one to rule 163, sub F, of the Nigerian Correctional Service Standing Order, I authorized in writing a letter backed by a warrant. The chairman, I'd like to report that movement of an inmate from one facility to the other must carry a warrant, a valid warrant. That warrant is called from 5 and 5A, transferring him to medium security custodial center, Kirikiri. That same tour for operational and security reasons, because ECO is very congested and uh, there were a lot of concern for the security implications. I'd like to confirm to this honorable committee that on the 12th he was moved to Kirikiri medium. That same tour, he spent about three, four hours in Ikoi. He got to Kirikiri and he was admitted. He stayed in Kirikiri medium for uh, barely 10 days. And uh, I had to move him. I had cost to move him out of Kirikiri medium to Kirikiri maximum, exercising my powers as provided in our, in our rules. Because the Controller General of Correction transmitted a call to me that there was a trending video on social media that Bob Risky donated some plastic chairs to our facility. And he asked me to, to find out, address the matter, and report back to him. On the strength of that directive, very firm directive, I rushed down to Kirikiri Medium. And I confirmed that 21 plastic chairs were donated to the facility. On further inquiry, it was confirmed that those chests were donated by relations of Bob Risky. Uh, granted, the officer in charge, who is a deputy controller, you know, got permission for me to travel to write an exam at Ijebibu that morning. So I entered the yard and I did two things. Firstly, I ordered that those chests be removed from the visiting hall outside the premises where visitors are processed and they should be taken out of circulation. Secondly, I had to go to the cell to see Bob Risky. And I told him that we will not accept any donation from his family or friends or himself to our facility henceforth, because it may create a very false impression about the reputation and integrity of the correctional service. Secondly, I effected his transfer, I ordered his immediate transfer from medium to maximum. How, sorry, how was he transferred? Did you carry him in your private vehicle to the maximum, or did you not? I followed them, I followed them to maximum. The vehicle we used in transferring, because of the urgency. Where was he? Was he in your vehicle? Or was he in the official vehicle of uh, your district? He was in my official vehicle, the operational helos, because courts were in session and the other operational vehicles, because of the serious sort of the matter, I had to, the courts have, have the inmates have gone to court with other vehicles. Is it the official vehicle or your private vehicle? Official operational vehicle. I have a flag car, the staff car with the flag, but I went to that facility since it was operational with an operational helos, official operational helos. I ordered the staff officer in Kirikiri Medium. Normally, if you are transferring an inmate with a letter and the transfer warrant, there must be an escort. All the, the proper documentation were done for him to be transferred, the gate, the record office, and everything that has to do with this transfer, you know, is uh, available. This it has been tendered. Have you submitted those things? It's been tendered. It's been tendered. Okay. It's, it's been tendered. So on the 22nd, we move under my supervision because the Contra General was monitoring the development. We had to move him to, to maximum. He stayed in maximum from 22nd of April to the 5th of August. 
when he was discharged from lawful custody upon expiration of his prison term. And with profound respect, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to uh, clarify the issue of keeping Boborinsky in a single cell. Boborinsky stayed in P. Ward. P. Ward has a capacity of 200 and, and 40. 240. He stayed in room 2. There are many single cells in that place. And it's a standard practice in the correctional service to classify it. We saw in Boborinsky a special case especially in the sense that he's a transgender, and allow him to stay in the general cell with other inmates could create a bigger problem. Firstly, he could be bullied, he could be violated, and it would be a major problem for us. And it's important to tell this committee that Bob Risky was not the only person staying in single cell. There are many inmates staying in single cell. We have a very important, a very important case we manage again. The same week Bob Risky came to Kirikiri Medium, we admitted, I have the warrant here, we admitted another inmate from a certain part of the country, a trailer driver, and he is a hemophrodite. Our men in Kirikiri Medium were very dutiful and professional, and they were able to search, and they, they detected that he's a hemophrodite. He had the male organ, and he had a female organ. That inmate stayed in Kirikiri medium from April to September. He just discharged from our facility. A, a trailer driver, and the, the charge is for stealing. He appeared before a magistrate court and they remanded him. And the deputy controller in charge did a professional job alongside his team, the, and they kept that inmate in a single cell. We kept the inmate in a single cell, because if we don't do that, there is classification of inmates in every facility. And the inmate is the same inmate, could not, an indigent inmate, he could not get a lawyer. The deputy controller in charge, medium security control center, would firm approval for me, got a, a legal representative to help that indigent inmate and approach the magistrate. He personally went to court to see the magistrate until the inmate was discharged from the facility. This is the letter he wrote and the warrant of that inmate. Who is the hemophrodite? Uh, the, uh, the chairman, we never took Bob Risky out of our facility. We never took Bob Risky out of our facility from the 12th of April to the 5th of August. In fact, even when there was a need for medical attention, because I got very firm instruction from the controller that we should do our work professionally because of the reputation of the service. There was, at the point there was a need for reference. By our regulations, the controller, only the controller can give approval for an inmate to be taken, you know, giving referral to another hospital. But I never gave any approval for Bobrisky even to get medical assistance outside. We have a clinic in maximum. A doctor's there and a, a, a medical team managed him until he left. He never left the facility. I say on oath. He served in a facility. Um, were, you, were you suspended too? I'm not suspended. I'm not under suspension, Mr. Chairman. Not, not even with the press release? release. No, I'm, I'm not under It didn't under affect you. you? No, it didn't affect me. I, I supervise it. Okay, okay um, um, members, members, we have had him. him. Uh, do you still have other things to say, or can you round up so that you can take one or two questions? Yeah, the, uh, I have a concern, Mr. Chairman, because I just got information today from one of my officers in charge of the facility that there's a trending story, because it's important we begin to address this thing, you know, going forward. There's a trending story of a high-profile inmate that was moved from a particular state in this country to our facility. And that there's a trend, another trending story that that inmate was taken from our facility in a particular state to an apartment close to the prison. And as the, the story is gaining traction, it, it may come to, to you very soon and to this honorable committee. So we do our work professionally because the service have zero tolerance for 
all forms of unprofessional conduct, unethical conduct, and those tasks will to manage an inmate in custody, so many hands are involved. A, an officer in charge of a facility cannot take an inmate out of the cell, out of the yard. To, to this is this why you are talking about now, is not why we are here. So let us deal with this one that uh, has brought us here Thank you, Mr. and conclude it. So um, can we take just three, three uh, direct questions to him? Let me start from Gio. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, sir, you mentioned that the, the urgency is that my principal, the Controller General of Correction, was on me monitoring that development. And I consulted with him. He gave me approval to transfer him. It may test you, Kirikiri medium and maximum is within the same range. It's uh, barely two, two, 200 meters from Kirikiri medium to maximum. So the officer in charge was not on ground. He traveled with my express permission. And I'm the, I was the command controller then. And once a super, now I'm an sir, sir, the urgency. The other officer says for security reasons. You came, you said the urgency. Can you explain to this honorable committee? Define this urgency for us. The urgency, I would respect, Mr. Chair, the urgency is that there's a trending story on social media that have attracted the attention of the Controller General. And he has asked me to address that matter. So I, I had to effect the transfer and the staff from the training. Okay. So, so the training story was about the chairs. The training story was about the chairs that and were donated. That were donated by his, his relations or friends who came the previous, the previous day. And the chairs in the visitors' room were not enough. Okay. So, so now. Whenever an officer on duty has to go for another course, is there nobody that usually takes over from him? Like an assistant? No, there is. There's no vacuum. He is so in this case, why did he have to be you? To come in and move Bob Risky with your official operational vehicle? Uh, it has to be me because I got directives from my controller general. And in your own assessment, assessment sir, sir, you are an officer. Yes. Was, was there a particular threat at that moment, moment that would have led to the breakdown of law and order? Or people coming in to break into your facility? Because you have still not defined the urgency for us. We want to know because your vehicles moved other inmates to court. You had to rush down there. On your way to that facility, did you meet some group of people trying to vandalize your facility? Because we are trying to understand this urgency. No, I, just go ahead, sir. You want to tell us? Yes, yes. Yes, yes. okay. The provision of uh, a standing order yes. allows the controller, rule 163F, allows the controller to move any inmate for security and administrative reasons. In this circumstance, the controller general called me. I got the information about this chest. Okay, let's, let's move to another question. So when you came, those chairs that were donated, were they moved out of the facility immediately, or those chairs were still there? They were moved immediately. First, I told you I took two actions, two equally important actions. Firstly, I went in company of my PRO and some deputy controllers. I ordered that those chairs be removed from the visiting hall because it was becoming an embarrassment to the service. Were they donated to the orphans, or you have kept them somewhere to be used on a separate day? No, I didn't donate them to. I didn't donate them to the offer. I asked them to remove. I gave the instruction and they complied. To the best of my knowledge, those chairs were moved out of the facility. They were moved out, out of that place. And the deputy controller can confirm that. Where are the chairs? 
where are the chairs now? Where are the chairs? I can't. Mr. Chair, I gave, um, as a command controller then, yes. I gave directives. And when you gave instruction for those chairs to be moved, to who? They moved out those chairs. Because when I entered, they moved the chairs out of the facility. To where? Well, those chairs were an embarrassment to us. And yeah, to where? Did you have them to just throw them under the I fridge? asked them to move those chairs. I didn't confiscate them. No, so you have not found out that they are still in your facility yet? I asked them to take those chairs out of the facility. The building so will you be surprised if I show you pictures now that those chairs are still in your facilities? I'll be surprised. You'll be surprised? I'll be surprised. So, so check, we will leave that chairman here back. I'm from Abia State. Uh, controller, I just have one question. Assistant controller. Yes, sir. You said that Bob Risky is a homophrodite. You said it. No, no, it's a transgender. That transgender of another person. Mr. Chair, as Bob Risky is a transgender. The, the next, we had another inmate we admitted. That, that the second inmate is the homophrodite. And I have his warrant with me. Okay. okay, thank you. David Agada, member representing Ojuwabifara constituency. I'm from Benue State. Uh, Assistant Controller General, first, I really want to appreciate the light you've thrown to the whole um, scenario, but I want to also put something straight here. We have a constitution that backed us as a nation. The 1999 constitution has amended. Some of these, uh, your findings, whether transgender or whatever other case, is not recognized by our constitution. These are your special discovery in the area of your field that you are managing professionally. I want, I want this to be laid to rest before it to be, you know, uh, attached to all of us seated here today. That is, by the way, I have been, we've come on oversight to those correctional facilities. And personally, I can attest to it, even while we are speaking here, some will be thinking, maybe the, me, uh, the medium, Greek prison, and the maximum is something that have this time. It's just a stone, stone throw. We walked there. We walked from the medium, down to the maximum, to the women, uh, this is female, from female we went to the maximum. It's just something workable. It's not something very far away. And we saw some of these cells by ourselves. The only thing I was keen about, that I was listening carefully for me to hear, is if this Mr. Uh, Okune was actually taken off the facilities totally. But you have cleared it. So I needed to say this so some of our colleagues could understand that we were there. And I saw it for myself. I see something different. I will say we saw some high profile people, uh, high profile convicted uh, uh, inmates there. We requested for them. We saw them. This way, some of the inmates they told us that they are not in custody. But we saw them. I won't mention sure their name for obvious reasons. And then some of these things that are being said are also of high security intel. It's because we are following the directive of Mr. Chairman. Some of these things will have been better in an executive section so that we can hit them one after the other. But be at its way. There are some other issues really to be looked into. You see, we have one of the officers that came on board. A question was thrown to him. Are you suspended or you are not suspended? The question was not well answered. These are some things that you yourself, as someone who is heading that region, should clarify as well. So we want to know, was there misional, um, um, uh, disciplinary measures put in place as a result of this trending issue we are investigating now? Is something that can come from a preview before even the Controller General could now uh, 
make an attestment to it. So we need you to clarify that, what you are doing regarding this video. Uh, the other aspect I will hold on until the EFCC people comes on board. But so far so good, you have clarified some of the issues. But on that aspect, we need you to clear it as one of the... Uh, shown that the 10 days is spent in the medium security uh, facility had a history of visitors. Can you also prove that when it was taken to the maximum security... Uh, thank you. The suspension of the two deputy controllers. I can confirm that uh, uh, there's a press release from our board uh, suspending uh, four officers, including the two that are heading to Rikiri Medium and Maximum. But as, as I speak now, they are, they are yet to be served with a formal official letter about the suspension. That's why they are still in, in full uniform. Uh, because of the allegations, the uh, allegations of uh, uh, corruption uh, in respect of Bob Brisky. Uh, it's around. I'm superior to him. He's a deputy controller. Can you, can you conclude? Uh, yes, I will profound respect. Mr. Chairman and Co-Chairman, I'd like to uh, reiterate the fact that uh, we did our job to the best of our ability. And uh, Bob Risky had been in our custody from the 12th of April to the 5th of August when he was properly discharged. In, max, in both medium and, and maximum facility, Kirikiri, we have impeccable records of all the management, including visitors. One, the biometrics of, of Bobiski is in maximum, is in medium, and is in ECOE. Those documents are before the committee. We brought back of them much earlier, and uh, I thought they shared it to members of the committee. Are you, are you telling us on oath now that you did not uh, collect any money to effect that uh, uh, transfer, urgent, that urgent transfer you did? In, in, with your official car. Mr. Chairman, with, with, for logistic challenge, I'd like to inform this honorable committee, I've had called several to use my official operational car for court du duties. At times, I did change the vehicle from Ikoi when I was controller from Alagon Close to go to Ikoi to assist them because of the challenge of acute shortage of vehicles. So it was not out of place for me to, and given the fact that it was next door, to move to the place. Because if I didn't do that, the Controller General would have you know, sanctioned me because he asked me to address this matter. Let's stop seeing this story that was trending. It's okay. It's okay. Let's, uh, let's have the man in charge of Do solemnly swear that the evidence I shall give to this committee shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help me God. Please, you have ten minutes. Honorable Chairman, all protocol duly observed. I, this is Sikiru Kamaru Adefunde, took over the maximum custodial center on the 9th of June 2024 on transfer from male prison Ondo Shekede. I was, I'm not the one that received Bob Risk Idris Okunaye on transfer from video. It was received by a retired DCC whom I took over from. Though it's a lie. And I managed Idris Okuneye under my watch from the 9th of June till 5th of August when I discharged him accordingly. The discharge warrant, the discharge certificate is here submitted. The original warrant it is here submitted as well. And I took pay to gather all the precinct parts right away from the month of April, May, June, and July because the record were intact. 
All these documents were submitted, sir. Okay, okay, okay. Um, Patrick. This is not supposed to be your question. I, I should have handled it with your superior. Uh, since you're here. Now, it, 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 it seems a caricature of the, uh, the Nigerian Correctional Service that there will be a press release, suspending officers, and your superior steps up here, or steps out here, and uh, says they've not been personally served, and so they're still in uniform. Is that how, that, 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 is that how it works there? Sir, this is a regimental service. If you are not very cautionary of the word you used, one might still be test switch on it. Honestly, it is like everybody had on paper, on here, that myself and my colleague from Medium were suspended. But up to today, there is no letter to the effect. Have you taken, okay, have you taken steps to verify if you are still in service or suspended from service as a dutiful officer? As a dutiful officer, if somebody is on suspension that is adding such a, 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 a custodial institution with immediate effect, there will be somebody to replace him. So far, there is nobody is there to take over from me as we maintain the ground for the safety of the country. So kindly confirm that the suspension was a farce. Not yet reverse, but as it's on paper, I hope. No, no, are you confirming, you confirming that? Okay, I'll change my, my word now. Are you confirming to this parliament that the suspension was fake? Hi, then you mention your name. Hi, I don't know, Baba. Who solemn this word? Who solemn this word? That the evidence. That the evidence. I shall give. I shall give. To this committee. To this committee. Shall be the truth. Shall be the truth. The whole truth. The whole truth. The whole truth. The whole truth. And nothing but the truth. And nothing but the truth. Help me, God. God, oh, help me, God. The name implies. As the name implies, my name is Halilu uh, Baba, M F R M N I. The as as the name implies, my name is Halilu Baba, M F M F R M N I, the Controller General of Nigeria Correctional Service. Uh, the presentation being made by the controller of corrections 
uh, Lagos State that Bob Risky has served his sentence is, is actually true. There is no time that that Bob Risky spent a single day outside. On the second issue of suspension, the officers concerned were duly suspended by the board for, to pave way for investigation. That is where we are now. And the, the letters will come today because it was, there, it was on Friday. The letters will come today from the board. That's all. Uh, the prosecutor is here. Uh, Belukis, yes. yes, not, not Rutimi Oyedipo. So she, if the uh, committee wants her to make a presentation, she's here, but not Rutimi Oyedipo. She was not the one. And, but I would like to also. Yes, the prosecutor is here in court. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, please come up. The CCTV camera recording. Recordings showing Mr. Idris in the correctional facility in that maximum within that dura duration. Uh, you have to prepare it and also tender it to us. When he arrived, the facility and when he was discharged. Take note of that. Mr. Chairman, sir. Mr. Chairman, can we... Mikisu Buhari, do solemnly swear that the evidence I shall give to this committee shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help me God. Honorable Chairman, sir, and honorable members of the committee standing on all existing protocol. Sir, the special duty legal of the legal directorate received the case file of Idris Okune, a.k.a. Bob, Bob Risky, on the 4th of April, 2024. After the receipt of the case file, my team sat down to come up with the case plan and proceed with the case. That in the course of carrying out its man, um, the commission in a bid to cop the, mutil the mutilation and nera abuse, set up a task, special task force to look into this offense. And Bobrisky was apprehended in the course of that. Sir, in the case file, the statement of the ex-convict confessed into earlier that Bob Express is not registered with SCUMO, that is Special Control Unit Against Money Laundering, because I'm not aware of it. Ignorance of the law is not an excuse, which informed our decision to charge him for not rendering returns Contrary to the, school, the Money Laundering Act, Section 6.1, and punishable under Section 19 of the same Act. However, on the 5th of April 2024, we moved a motion for the Honorable Court to hear the matter because it was a vacation matter, and we were granted leave to proceed with trial. Notwithstanding the unequivocal confession of the ex-convict, convicting the essential ingredients in counts five and six of the charge, and having indicated willingness to plead guilty to counts one and four of the charge, which has to do with mutilating of the Naira currency, the prosecution in total fidelity and conduct its oath and strict adherence to professional practice of not only disclosing ex exculpatory documents to defense, having received a report from, of investigation activities from SCUMO, which showed that Bob Express is not a designated non-financial business and profession, decided to drop counts five and six of the charge in the interest of justice and fair hearing without any inducement or prompting of any sort from the defense. 
and in line with the mandate of the Special Task Force against NERA abuse, we attached the response from SCUMO. We also attached the charge showing counts one to six. There was no amendment of charge. The dropping of counts five and six was done in court because the ex-convict elected to plead guilty to counts one and four, which had to do with NERA abuse. In any event, sections five, uh, sorry, counts five and six, which had to do with not rendering returns to SCUMO, showed that it was not the Bob Express which he used to trade. It's not a designated non-financial business and profession. That's what informed our decision to drop counts five and six in court. An amendment of charges is not alien to practice, particularly sections 216 of Act 2015. It, was, it is also noteworthy that the alteration made by the, country, by the prosecution did not contravene any provision of the extant policies of the Commission and its, standard in, and its standard operating procedures. We have amended charges severally in court when the need arises. That steps taken by the prosecution in this proceeding, dropping in the proceedings, in count five and six, which is akin to amendment of the charges, can take place at any time before judgment, is not alien as the commission has, in numerous instances, had cause to amend, add or subtract from the body of the counts of the charge preferred against defendants. And this will not be the last. We attach the record, records of proceedings of the court showing how we arranged the defendant in court. The Honorable... To show that the ex-convict was... There was no cohort between the prosecution and defense. The ex-convict even appealed the judgment of the court. If there was any interaction or any agreement, he would have gotten what he wanted and he couldn't have appealed. We also have the notice of appeal by the ex-convict attached to our documents. We also attached a copy of the charge, the record of proceedings, and the memo setting up the special task force that investigated the case of the ex-convict. So I want to state categorically that there was no form of financial inducement to any member of the commission, especially the prosecution team in respect of this matter. All we did was we carried out our duty in, as regards to our core values of professionalism and the ethics that I took as a legal practitioner to prosecute and not persecute anybody. We are most grateful. Are you done? Okay, can you send out the documents you have? Okay, dear colleagues, uh, can we have, do you have anybody who wants to ask? The two count charges. Okay, can you exp uh, explain more why the uh, money laundering uh, charges were, why, why it was dropped? Okay, sir, as I said earlier, when we were analyzing the case file to prepare our charges, the purport of the charges in the first place was to charge for Naira abuse and mutilation of Naira currency. But then the defendant confessed that Bob Express, we attached his statement wherein he proffered this um, confession. Let me Bob, Bob Express is not registered with SCUMO, Special Control Unit Against Money Laundering. And knowing that we can convict on a confessional statement, we went ahead to include counts five and six in the charge. But when he elected to plead guilty in court in the morning, and having at the back of our mind that we rest, um, response from the special control unit against money laundering, saying that the Bob Express that we're charging for not rendering returns is not qualified to be a designated non-financial business and profession as provided under the Money Laundering Act. Is it clear now? 
Okay. Do we have any other person? Okay. Um, if we don't have uh, any other person, I think uh, EFCC, what they have is the main allegation against them is uh, uh, dropping of this charge, that they collected money to drop the money laundering charge, which she has said emphatically that um, they did not collect money. Uh, it's left for the committee to do our own investigation to know what they are saying, whether it's the fact or not. Uh, she has also said originally it was six count. Uh, uh, they were charging for six count, but she has explained why they, uh, uh, they, they had to drop the money laundering uh, charge. So, so, on, on that, that note, note uh, dear, dear colleagues, the day, day is uh, fast spent. Uh, I, I want um, one of us to move that we adjourn. Okay. Okay, okay. okay. Uh, and the co chair of uh, the joint committee for the investigation of this disturbing allegation of corruption against the EFCC uh, and other gov uh, government agencies. I stand here today, my name is Michael Ezeque, the Chief of Staff to the Executive Chairman. I stand to represent him. He sends in his uh, sincere apologies for not being here uh, due to the exigencies of uh, duty that came calling, though he would have wished to be here. Uh, the letter of investigation into this uh, uh, very deep and disturbing allegation, uh, we would like to just make this presentation on behalf of the Executive Chairman very quickly. Our attention was drawn to the viral video published by Juan Martins, Vincent Ute, a.k.a. Very Dark Man VDM, wherein Idris Olaruwaju, Okeneya, a.k.a. Bob Risky, and S. Convicts alleged that the officials of the commission received the sum of 15 million naira to drop money laundering counts in charge uh, FRON versus Ukunde Idris Olarowaju. In the same video, the publisher, uh, the very dark man, revealed that Bob Risky made this presentation to an undisclosed friend of his, whom he intended to receive a financial support from. Attached here is a copy of the charge we have marked as Enclosure 1. Given the gravity of the offense, which touches on our core value as a commission, it touches seriously on our core value, and we do not take uh, kindly uh, to the integrity of the commission, one of the best all over the world and in Africa. Uh, for our integrity to be touched. Given the, this value of integrity, courage, professionalism, and collaboration, the executive chairman promptly constituted a team to investigate the claim and equally issued a statement through his various social media accounts to that effect. While the investigation is still ongoing, the executive chairman received from this honorable house an invitation directing his appearance and the concerned officers of the commission before this honorable committee for an investigative hearing. Upon close scrutiny and analysis of that video that gave rise to this investigative hearing, the commission observed the following, that the published and widely circulated video contained a private conversation between the ex convict and a yet to be identified individual who, in an attempt to obtain monetary benefit, alleged that the, alleged the compromises and the compromise of the officers of the commission, the Nigerian Correctional Service, a private legal practitioner, Femi Falana SAN, and a private and a false, the bad guy. That in an attempt to induce and convince the yet to be identified individual into parting with his money, the ex convict alleged that the sum of 15 million naira was demanded by the officers of the commission to drop the count of money laundering counts in counts five and six of the charge sheet 
and that he could not transfer the said sum from his account because of the investigation, thereby inferring that the said account was frozen. That at the time he was demanding for this money and claim his accounts were frozen or under investigation, the commission never, at no time in the course of investigation, placed the account of the ex-convicts under personal debit. His account was never frozen throughout the period of investigation. Whereas the ex-convict mentioned the names of his friends who raised various sums of money and credited him to the account of his brother. The names of the officers of the commission that allegedly collected the bribe were not disclosed by the ex-convicts. Also, the mode, the place, date and time of the delivery of the alleged bribe or to an account where it was paid was not disclosed by the ex-convicts. Arising from the above observation, the commission wishes to state categorically as follows. In view of the prevalent nature of the currency, mutilation and abuse of the Naira, which has been expressly criminalized by Section 21 of the CBN Act 2027, the commission in a bid to cop the said offenses and in the discharge of his statutory duty, set up a special tax force via a memo by the executive chairman to all his directorates. Now attached here with is also a copy of the said memo marked as enclosure two. As a result of the setting up of this special tax force and the vigorous sensitization, investigation and prosecution, a number of convicts were, a number of convictions were secured which has significantly stemmed this dangerous tide of abuse of the Naira. I mean, to which all Nigerians are witness today. It was in the course of carrying out its mandate that the Special Tax Force of the Commission, Lagos Directorate, received intelligence which revealed that, which revealed four different videos of gross abuse of the Naira goods perpetrated by the ex-convicts, which warranted his investigation and prosecution. That on the 12th of April 2024, the ex-convicts, while undergoing investigation, in his extrajudicial statement, confessed clearly inter alia, Bob Express is not registered as Kumo, Special Control Unit Against Money Laundry, I'm not aware. Hence the inclusion of count five and six, due to his own confession that Bob Express is not registered. So the prosecutors had to now include all of this and then did a further check on that. Now, in the body of the charge, this was included, where the defendant now as convict was alleged to have failed to submit to SCUMO a declaration of his activity, which is contrary to section 6.1 of the Money Laundering Prevention and Prohibition Act 2022, and punishable under section 19 of the same act, in addition to the substantive offense of tampering with the Naira note as contained in count four, for count one to four. However, on the 5th of April 2024, notwithstanding the unequivocal confession of the ex-convict admitting the essential ingredients of in count 5 and 6 of the charge and having indicated willingness to plead guilty to count 1 and 4 of the charge, the prosecution, in total fidelity and candor to his oath and strict adherence to professional practice of not disclosing documents to their defense, Having received a report of the investigation and activities from SCUMO, which showed that Bob Express is not a designated non-financial business and profession, decided to drop counts five and six of the charge in the interest of justice and fair hearing, without any inducement or prompting of any sort from the defense, and in line with the memoranda of the special, with the mandates of the special tax force against Naira abuse. We, we have this also attached here and marked as an issue three. That the Honorable House is invited to note that alteration, amendment, addition of charges is known to law. Very known to law. Particularly section 216 of the Administration of Criminal Justice Act 2015. It's also noteworthy to note that it, it is also not 
what he here to note that the alteration made by the prosecution did not contravene any provision of the Eastern policies of the commission, nor a standard operating procedure. That in the steps taken by the prosecution in proceeding to drop count five and six, which is akin to amendment of the charges, can take place at any time before judgment is, is not alien, it's not alien, as the commission has, in numerous instances, caused charges to be amended. You can see our attachment as enclosure four. The Honorable House is urged to use this to use this constitutional power to ensure that corruption and other vices are exposed, investigated, prosecuted, and also ensure that patriotic and dedicated officers are not blackmailed, demonized, and demoralized for faithfully serving and carrying out their lawful duties. That the commission has been consistent in its advocacy, calling on all public with credible information on any alleged act of corruption involving any of the staff to come forward with evidence. This, the public is urged to do responsibly. Short of the ex-convicts and other accusers openly naming the officers of the commission to whom they allege gave the bribe of 15 million naira in order to induce and influence the dropping of count five and six of the charge, bordering on money laundering. It is reasonable to infer that the ex convict merely made up the story to convince the yet to be identified person he was speaking with in order to obtain financial favor under the pretense by dropping the name of the commission. We wish to draw the attention of the, of the Honorable House to the fact that the onus of proving this grievous allegation against officers of the commission rests squarely on the accusers in this 